Hi guys. Well, that's good. So from next week, we're going to come a half an hour earlier. Would be maybe better for you, for me. No, but it's not going to change much for me. Because <laughs> basically now it's 11 o'clock and then it will be half 10, but that's completely fine. All right, cool. So how are you today? How are you feeling? I feel good. Good? That's good. Good. Did you have an intense week, like with classes, maybe tests, exams? Well, we do get exams next, next week. Question. Most of Europe, because obviously in Europe, like students have different kind of educational system, obviously, but they actually have a summer holiday starting from middle of June until beginning of September or late uh, August. So they have like a summer holiday for a month and a half. Some countries has two months, but they have no exams. They have nothing at all. Do you have that? Like for a longer period of time, no school whatsoever. Really? Yeah? Tell me, sweetie. Our year and exit. Uh, our year and holiday. Oh, wow, okay. So basically, when do you change the new level, the new grade? Let's say in September, students here, if they've been in grade five, then they're going to be in grade six. But they change. That actually changes in September. Vanessa, when does it change in your country? We change in January. Uh -huh. Okay, so in January till December is your basically calendar year. Okay, oh, we didn't know that. That's interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. December is actually a uh, holiday, one year, uh, one month holiday. So until. When is that holiday? November. December is our Monday holiday for all the students. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting to know. Okay. So when are your last exams? Isra, when are your last exams, like final exams? Uh, around October and November. Oh, yes. okay. Now I get to learn a bit. I didn't know. No one didn't tell me this before. Oh, no. Our no, okay. no, school is supposed to be like four exams in one year. First semester and okay. second semester. Oh, okay. So, hi, Serena. Hi, teacher. How are you today? I'm fine. Good. Awesome. Okay, guys, that's perfect. Well, now I learned something new about your educational system. That's fine. That's great. Cool. Okay, so today, let me show you what are we going to do today. Um, let me just find it. Okay, here it is. Yeah, Hangman, we're not going to start with that, definitely. <laughs> okay, so what are the objectives of the class today? Again, we're going to have some speaking, we're going to have some writing, but we're going to talk mainly about future, future dreams, future goals. We're going to watch some videos, some interesting videos, and then I'm going to encourage you to speak a bit more about things that have been invented in the past. We kind of use them now and potentially we're going to use them in the future or we won't. We're going to start with the beginning. And as I said, each class, I want each one of you to learn how to ask the proper question. So instead of me asking you, what did you do today? Um, how was your week and stuff like that? We're going to skip that step. We're not going to do it just because I want something a bit more fun. So that being said, let's start with. So the first task or the warm up that we're gonna have is asking questions about the future, okay? So I will give you like a minute or so to think about a question that you could possibly uh, give to one of the students over here. I have three questions prepared just to give you an idea. So you can ask anything about the future. Let's say my first question, I'll start with, um, I'll start with, who should I have here? Okay, to be fair, I have a list here and let me just share it with you how I actually have it written. 
kind of fun. Okay, this is the list for you, right? So I got Cindy and you see how I wrote Cindy, so I wouldn't try with this, <laughs> with your original name. So I just highlighted it. So I'm gonna follow my list to ask you questions. I'll start with Cindy. Cindy, the first question for you. Does the future exist? What do you think? They're a bit challenging, right? But that's the catch. So what do you think? Mm, yes. Yeah, what do you think? Does the future exist? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, it does. Why do you think it exists? Um. <laughs> okay, let me ask you a follow-up question. I'm going to put it over here. Does time exist? Because they're slightly connected. So when we say future, what do we think about the future? Is it something that potentially might happen, like in a couple of hours, days, and so on, or it's something that already happened? Not yet happened. Okay, not yet happened. Okay, but a lot of scientists, they say that time does not exist, that everything is happening now. How about that? <laughs> it, it's kind of brainstorming now. Hmm? Uh, Jun was reacting with, with his head. Can you tell us your opinion? What do you think? I feel like well, you're not. Time is yeah. Yeah. Kind of loud there. Yeah. Would you like yeah. to pass it to other person? Okay, loud. okay, I will, I will do that. that. All right, thank you. Ezra, what do you think? Do you think that the future exists because some scientists said that time does not exist, that everything happens now? Everything that we experience happens now, literally at this moment. So what, what is your thought about it? Uh, I think time exists. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it exists? I mean, uh, um, I don't know. You're not sure? Okay. Anyone else has an opinion about this or something that crosses their mind? Or I have a, I have a ah here you are okay tell us well time there's no backwards so we have to move forward but time okay by logic yes <laughs> so I don't know if you follow this motivational speakers because I do that obviously quite quite a lot. And they often say that time does not exist. Uh, just one follow-up question. Have you ever, well, that's not the topic for today, but it's kind of related. Have you ever read or watched the movie called The Secret? Is, is anyone familiar with this? I think the author was... Rhonda Byrne or something like that. Uh, uh, this is not how we spell her name, but I can think of at the moment. I need to Google it. I need to check it. So she has a lot of books connected with this kind of topics. So she made the book and then uh, obviously a video was not a movie, but it's like a documentary film. So they recorded it and explaining that you know, time really doesn't exist and all your thoughts that you have at the moment is something that you experience happening now. That was the question of it. Does time exist? Because a lot of scientists, like you probably know Albert Einstein, right? You've heard about him? Yes, a yeah? brilliant scientist. 
Yeah, so Albert Einstein. He, well, he uh, discovered four papers, actually. I do read okay. his story about it. Yeah, so he also says that time does not exist, that everything happens now. Well, but, but there is, there is a big but. And why do we have clocks? If time does not exist, why do we have clocks? Why do we know that this class is two hours? Why do we know that we need to be at school at seven o'clock in the morning if time does not exist? It's like, it's possible without time, there's no present, future, or uh, past. Mm. Okay, so that being said, let's explain something else as well, which, which is also related to English language. In English, we only have two grammar tenses. We got the present happening now and we got the past, right? So whatever happened, we experienced and that's one grammar tense. The other one is the present, which is happening now. The rest of them are just forms. So you got, uh, if you ask someone and you ask them how many grammar tenses are in English language, they will say 16. Well, they're not 16, they're only two grammar tenses. The rest that we say, so 14, would be just forms. So future, the future tense, or future simple, future continuous is actually just a form. So that's kind of related when it comes to uh, uh, the language. But generally, what, what scientists, most of them, and you know this one, uh, how's it called? Steven, Steven. Oh, I need to, I need to search. I, you see, I, I wasn't ready for that. Stephen just, Hawking? <laughs> yes, I think so. He also says that uh, time does not exist. Everything is at the moment. Einstein also said that. For us, as you know, just general normal people, for us, it might be a bit complicated to understand that, but scientists they actually show it in a very um, simple way. They explain that. Well, it's not our job, you know, to say it is like that or it's not because we're not scientists. Okay, that's just like a, like a little brain teaser for you to see how you think about it. Okay, the next question I would choose is, when does the future happen? Cindy said something is going to happen in the future. Okay, but well, how about this one? What does future mean? Does that mean it's a positive thing? It's a negative thing? It's a perception? If one thing is good for me, it might be bad thing for you or the other way around. How should we define the future? Let's ask, who do I have here? Evelyn. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. So what does the future mean? You don't know, okay. Serena, what do you think? What does future mean? Does it mean that something is good, that something is bad, that we don't know, could be mixed, could be both? What do you think? Um, prepare your questions by the way now you need to ask a question related to future any kind of question yes Serena go ahead what does future mean for you tell me about you your opinion when you think about the future what do you think that only good things are going to happen to you or good and bad, or maybe just bad things. How do you feel? What is your perception of the future? Well, anything can happen in the future. Um, something going to happen, but we don't know what is this. Okay. And is there a way for us to know what will happen? Um, no. No? Why not? What you tell her? fortune teller oh okay that's it that's one option if you believe in fortune tellers like last week we spoke about astrology some people could go to astrologer and just ask you know what next month i want to buy a house should i buy the house and astrologer would say 
yeah, you know, you have this planet in this house and you do this. And <laughs> I mean, if you believe in stuff like that, if you don't believe, then it's not going to work. Okay. Fine. Now, let me, let me hear your questions. Uh, let's start with Cindy. Cindy, the first question for you, Link. You ask whatever you want to ask. Can I think for a minute? Yeah. Okay. You, Link, do you have a question prepared for Evelyn? We're just going to follow the list because it's easier. Are we able to predict our future? Oh, so, sorry, sweetie. One more time. Are we able? What was the question? To predict our future. Uh -huh. Are we able to predict the future? Perfect. Good question. Are we able to predict the future? Oh, that's a nice question. And the question was for Evelyn. Evelyn, what do you think? I don't know if she's here. Is she here? No, she's not. She disappeared. Okay, the question is for Ezra then. Uh, can you ask again? Yes. Are we... Oh, sorry, I have a misspell over here. Sorry. Are we able to predict the future? Uh, well, some people can. How do you think they do that? Um... I think some people are gifted with this ability okay. and uh, in what terms do you think they predicted like do they have some feelings do they uh, have their what's called do they dream about it as uh, June said fortune teller do they need a crystal in which way do you think that they can predict it? Dreams and feelings. Okay, all right, good. And would you believe in that kind of future if someone potentially says, I will predict your future, I will tell you what's going to happen in your life? Would you believe in that? Um, uh, maybe. If you liked it, right? If you liked yeah. what she's going to say. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Cool. Okay. All right, Siri. Can you make a question for uh, June, please? Actually, I do have questions. Hold on. Your question is still not yet to come. Hold on. Hold your horses. Ezra has a question for you. <laughs> um, uh... What could you possibly ask him? Do you think the future will be all about uh, robots? Okay, good question. June, do you think that the future will be all about robots? Actually, you know, we're living in this kind of era where people became lazy and they have machines about anything in the world. So, June, what do you think? Uh, technically, yes. One day, human will be replaced by robots or AI, artificial intelligence. Since the technology is getting more advanced, yeah, I would say yes. But right. that's too way far in the future. Well, we are not there yet. We are still like still in a not that advanced society <laughs> okay makes sense and i feel that in my personal opinion asia is more close to the future 
and Especially rest China. of the continent. China. China, Japan, yes, those countries, yes, because they invented so many things that, you know, they still haven't been discovered here in Europe, especially. Like we just watch, I don't watch TikTok, but I watch compilations on YouTube. Like TikTok is not my thing. I just don't understand it. I don't even know why it exists. But I can see a lot of people are actually um, making like this compilations on YouTube and like what kind of things they actually invented. It's, I just can't imagine that. So Asia is probably maybe even more steps closer to the future. Rest of the world is still sleeping. Obviously, Europe is called the old continent because it's basically the oldest continent. So until things come to Europe, I don't know what's going to happen. Probably we're going to move to Mars until then. <laughs> See what happens. Okay, June, uh, what is your question for who's next? For Vanessa. Oh, Vanessa is praying. She wants something easy. I can see. Don't give her easy. Give her something difficult. I think it's will trigger, but I will miss out the question. All right. Does the time define itself? Oh, does the time define itself? Okay. Vanessa's going to run away now. <laughs> what do you think? Does the time define itself? I think hmm, it defined by the human. I don't know. Okay. What, what is your opinion, sweetie? You personally, what do you think? Forget about the rest of the world. Forget about scientists, what they think. This is about your approach, how you think. Because guys, one thing I want you to, obviously I am a teacher, I am a tutor, I'm an instructor, but also I want to give you some clear guidelines for future references, something you can use. Try always to form your opinion. It might it might not be, you know, a scientist thing or a proof. That's their problem. That's not your problem. The way how you think, uh, how you see things is something that is very important. You are the person that makes opinion in their head. So for example, I'm a person that has opinion about everything in life. Not necessarily is the right one, but it's my opinion, right? So this is what you need to work on. Just form an opinion, right? any topics even in the world. Somebody asks you, yeah, you know, I don't know, it's fine, you know, because you haven't thought about it, but think about it now. Like, what is the first thing that crosses your mind? That's the whole idea. Your opinion could not match with your parents' opinion because you're two different people, two different beings. You have different energies, so it shouldn't be the same one. Yes, if it matches, that's fine. But if it doesn't, you don't have to argue and say, no, you're wrong, I'm right. No, it's just your personal opinion and everyone should respect that because this is how you feel. In your head, this is how things make sense, right? So this is something that is very important and I want you to work on it. Fact is a fact, right? Something that it's a fact. English has 26 letters and that's a fact. You can change that, unfortunately, right? <laughs> that's different. But when you want to form an opinion, maybe you could say, yeah, well, English has 26 letters, but I think maybe they should invent the O with the cross because we don't pronounce that letter, but it looks nice. That is your opinion, okay? So, Vanessa, what do you think? You said you don't know. Give me another answer. I told you this would trigger her. <laughs> she did freak out. Yeah, you gave her a puff one. So he asked you, does the time define itself? If you ask me, I would say uh, yes, because whatever happens in this moment, there is a reason, there is a cause that's happening now, right? Because in three seconds, something else will happen. So I would say for me, the answer would be yes. This is, this is how I get it in my head. He might not gonna like my answer, you know. Maybe he's thinking completely something different. That is his problem, okay? You don't think about is he going to like the answer. 
you give us your answer. Come on, try it, try it. You already list out the important points. <laughs> she doesn't have anything to say right now. Go on, Vanessa. Teacher, actually, I don't know the meaning about the question, so I can't answer it. Okay, okay, that, that's a bit different. So, June, can you please elaborate a bit? What do you mean by that question? It's like you say, well, in that moment, well, everything happened to have the reason, so time do can be defined well i, I forgot something <laughs> you see he he doesn't even know the answer to his question that was a bit tricky <laughs> i just okay. i just suddenly i just i just construct this sentence in my mind or right, i just want to give it a try so i have no idea yeah. you ask me to answer my own question so i would be freak out he awesome. wanted to confuse you, Vanessa. Forget about it. Yeah, you did awesome, sweetie. Well done. Can you please make a question for Serena? That was sneaky. That was, that was very sneaky, June. Let's make a question for Serena. Let's see how she thinks about it. My question is about a news I read before. Um, the news is about a man who claims he woke up in 2027, but he can still contact him with us via Instagram and TikTok. So my question is, do you believe in time traveler or maybe parallel universe? Nice, good question, I love it. Serena, what do you think about this question? Um. I think the question is not make sense. <laughs> so you believe that people can time travel from one no, year to no. another? No, I don't think so. So what would you say about this man who claims that he lives in that year? Do you think that something is wrong with him? Maybe her mind something wrong. Ah, okay. Do you think that maybe there is a slightly, like, smaller chance that maybe he's right? Maybe he's a bit advanced, more than us. Well, time travel is just a sci-fi <laughs> myth. It's I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> you see, everyone has a different opinion about it. And also, it depends what kind of uh, literature you like to read. Like if you're interested in stuff like this, you're gonna go deep and deep and deep. you're gonna dig a lot of information. And you know, your brain will have more information to kind of rely to it. So it's fine. Everyone is different, that's perfectly fine. Serena, can you make a question for Cindy, please? Cause Cindy skipped her row. So now we're going back to Cindy cause she thought she's gonna run away from this, but she didn't. So let's go back to Cindy. Make her a question. Um, do you think we will move to another planet in the future? Oh, this is my... <laughs> I want to ask this question to... Um... Do you want to ask the question? Yeah. Okay. Okay, first give me your answer and then you can ask the question to you, Link. Is it, it's okay, no problem. Um, I think yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, um, I think it might change because the world is, is polluted by, by the ever environment is polluted, so we might. Mm change the planet if you can. Okay, perfect. Now you can ask the same question to you, Link, and we're going to be done. We're going to continue with something else. Can I ask another question? Of course you can. Go ahead. What is your study plan in the future? Okay, good. Study abroad. 
study what city? Study abroad. A abroad. You want to study abroad? Yes. Okay. Where would you like to study? You, do you have like specific locations, specific studies you want to learn? Uh, I would improve my English. Good. Well done, guys. Perfect. That was good. You see, questions can be a bit difficult, but that doesn't mean, again, try always to form your opinion. Could be right, could be wrong. Who cares? That is your opinion, and you should respect how you, how you feel and think about certain things. Also, the person who is asking you a question, they can blame you, they can judge you, right? Because this is the way you see things. Because we are not equal. All of us are not equal. You know, you have 10 fingers. They're all different. If you even have a twin sister or a brother, it's not going to be like you. So we're all different, right? So always form your opinion. Could be something that people like. They shouldn't like it. You shouldn't care. And that's it. Okay? Simple as that. All right. Let's get going. I'm going to share with you a trailer of a film called Goal. Have you heard about this movie? Goal, the dream begins. Seems like no. Okay, no problem. Let's watch it for a second. It's very short, like two, three minutes. Let's see what is it about. I just realized uh, yeah, that time passes like 40, 40 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> 34, exactly. Okay, sorry, we didn't see that. Let's go back. I didn't see it though. In the city of dreams. Which city? City of dreams. Dreams, okay. What city do you think that is? City of dreams. Yes, New York. <laughs> is it? Okay. Know. Why do they call it the city of dreams? Because everyone makes a dream in there. <laughs> everyone can do whatever they want. Exactly, Ezra. <laughs> Perfect. So everyone feels freedom to do whatever they want to do. But generally, you can do whatever you want to do in every single city in the world. So, you know, who's going to stop you? Unless it's something that is uh, something that it's kind of just in that particular place. Maybe it's like a location or something. In that case, yes. All right, let's see. Hey, that was easy. We got dreams. Santiago, what are you doing? Santiago Munez had a day job and a night job. Hey, boss, I've been a boss boy now for six months. Why can't I be a waiter? This time. Uh huh. Okay, Serena, can you help us with this? We just need to make a sentence. Why can't I be a waiter? Mm -hmm. All right, let's check it out. Good. Okay. This Chinese restaurant, you're not Chinese. Quiet! But every other moment, he lived for the game. He's quite a player. Okay, uh, Cindy, can you please make a sentence? He's quite a player. Mm -hmm. All right. Well done. I'm not asking you anything now. We're just going to watch it, then I'm going to ask you. What's your name, son? Santiago Munoz. If you get yourself to England, Newcastle United will give you a trial. That's a big club. Very big club. It's okay to have dreams, son, but people like us have to work for a living. There's always plan B. We win the lottery. Now, for his family. You deserve this chance, Santiago. Take it. He'll pursue a dream 6,000 miles from home. I have a tryout for Newcastle United. You want to leave? Okay, June, help us. A trial for Newcastle United. What does that mean? A trial. Oh, did you? 
try out. out. Sorry, try my out. bad. My bad. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, I was too fast. Okay. No what does it mean? Try out. Give it a try. Okay. Does that mean that? If they like him, they will take him, or it's just like free of charge, you know, just to see if you're a good runner. Uh, he just says, you, know, you just want to try how it works out for him. All right, good. Sorry, that was my mistake. I pressed the wrong button. What is it exactly? You don't want to know. This spring, he's jet lagged, nervous, he's never seen mud before. <laughs> Maybe you don't have the stamina for the English game. Ezra, what did he say? Stamina. Stamina, what does that mean? How do I spell it? Um, S-T-A-M-I-N-A. -A. Okay. All right, good. Adios, awesome. there you go. I'll be better tomorrow, I promise. It's not going to be... Okay, what does he promise, Vanessa? I heard better tomorrow. Better tomorrow? Okay. Oh, let's write it down. Yeah. yeah, let's try. Better tomorrow. Okay, let's see. He'll be better tomorrow. That's good. I'm going to go with right. Awesome. Be tomorrow, Santiago. He's grown up in poverty and hardship, and his only way out is his skill with the ball. Monez, just wanted to see what it felt like to be in this field. You think you deserve it? I know I do. From Touchstone Pictures. It is now quite a day for this young man. One man's extraordinary journey. Okay, let's match out the words. We have extraordinary. Give me a help. Journey. Journey, okay. Quite. Quite a day. Quite a day, awesome. And the last one, this young man. Let's check out. Of course, way too easy. That's my song. As my boy, Santiago, is about to begin. Kuno Becker. Goal. The dream begins this spring. Okay, so let's check out now what kind of dream he actually had. Actually, was this a dream or was this a goal? Or is there any difference between dreams and goals? Cindy, what do you think? I can see Cindy, she goes like, eh, well, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Um, it might be a dream. Okay. And why is not a goal? Why it's a dream and it's not a goal? Is there, let's start with this. Is there a difference between dreams and goals? So I'm gonna put here, dreams versus goals. Well, dream is uh, what you want to become and goals is what you are target for. What's your, what's your aim? What's your ambition? So which one is better, dreams or goals? I would say, in my opinion, I would say goals instead of okay. dreams. Okay. Cindy, do you agree? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, for those of you that haven't watched The Secret, maybe none of you has it, there is this one person, uh, Bob, Bob something, forgot his name, he always says, if you just dream about being something, becoming something, receive something, it's just a dream, right? But unless you write it down on a piece of paper and you know that you are 100% sure that you want to achieve this, then it becomes a goal. For example, well, my dream is, you know, just to have a big house, you know, animals, kids, stuff like that, right? But you just think it like once in a while. I'm not completely focused on it. But let's say if I want to be um, an English teacher in, let's say, Asia, somewhere in Asia. So what am I going to do? 
I need to do something, right? I need to apply for jobs. I need to learn something about your culture because if I go there and I do things that are not normal to be done there, people will judge me or I might gonna be in jail, you know, you never know because it's a different kind of culture. So when it comes to goals, you need to write it down and you need to work towards it. So how about, let's go back to Santiago. Uh, what did he do to achieve his dreams to become goals? What did he do? Serena, what did he do? Did he do something or he did nothing? Did he just went to bed and he was just dreaming to be a football player and waiting for his mom to feed him? Or did he do certain jobs to get the money so he can move to Newcastle? Newcastle is in England, by the way. Um, he tried to... What did he try to do? My question is actually, did he do something or did he do nothing? He had to do something. Like what? What, did, what? what do you remember from the video? Um, doing some doing job. Perfect. So he had a day job and a night job. What, what was his day job? Being a chef. Was it? He was cleaning something on the street, I think. Uh, Who remembers, guys? What was his day job? He was doing something on the street. Oh, uh, he was a chef, or yeah, he was a chef in a Chinese restaurant. Wasn't that a night job? I guess. <laughs> I, guess I think that. Yeah, that was a night job because he wanted to be a waiter. And why they didn't allow him to be a waiter? Well, the, the manager said, because you are not a Chinese. <laughs> it's a little bit cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. All right, so at the end, did he actually make his dreams come true? Yes. Yes, he did, definitely. So he moved to Newcastle and he, he started playing football or soccer, whatever you want to call it. People call it differently. No right or wrong. It's up to you. It's your opinion. Okay, good. So let's see a couple of follow-up questions and I'm going to give you a break before we actually start with the exercises. So let's do some more speaking. Do dreams come true? Ezra, I'll start with you. Uh, yes. Why do you think yes? Um, because most of the time, uh, um, or let's let's simplify the question. Yeah. What should people do to make their dreams come true? Should they do, should they take any action or sh they shouldn't do anything because you know, it's the dream. You just daydream, night dream, you know, should they do something about it? Yes. Like what? What should setting, they do? Setting up a goal. Okay, cool. And um, uh, follow, make a schedule and follow the schedule. And, Perfect. Like, all right, good. That's a good answer. Okay. Um, you link. do you think it's good to dream? Do you think that people should actually dream and about certain things they, they want to achieve, they want to have? Could be something on a physical level, something they can touch, like a house, um, a car, whatever. Or it's not that good to dream because yeah, they, can, they might face with disappointment. What do you think? Is it good to dream? No. No, why not? She was very strict. No, no dreaming. <laughs> why, sweetie? We can try to fulfill our dream, but not dream about our dream. Oh, okay. 
does that mean that there is nothing in the world that you would like to achieve? Or is there something that you would like to achieve? There's something I want to achieve. Ah, so you do have dreams. Yes. Okay, good, 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 good. good. One more question before I give you a break. So this is actually very interesting. Obviously, when you set a goal, something that you want to achieve, in many cultures in Europe, uh, they say, never share your goals or dreams with anyone else because they might kind of send you some negative energy and at the end of the day you're not going to achieve what you want because people we've been kind of they've been jealous to you if you want let's say imagine if you have a dream to become a famous um a famous person any kind of activity right so let's say just you want to be famous maybe a famous singer and they believe that if people actually know that you want to be a famous singer, they will try to cut you off loose, right? So they will basically try anything to do for you not to achieve that goal. So the question is, should we share our goals with other people? Who has an opinion about this? Serena, what do you think? I think we, we can share our goals with other uh, with people. Like what people? What people should we share? Should we share with friends? Should we share with family? Should we share with everyone? We can share with our friends and family. Do you think they will help you? Um, with family, I can... Uh, I think they will help you when what you want. If, if you have a goal, they will help you if they can. Okay. All right. Good. June, what do you think about this? I would say I will keep it private for myself. You will keep it for yourself? Yes. I don't want anyone to know it. Why? Maybe they are jealous. Some of them may be jealous. Uh -huh. So you believe that people can become jealous? Yes. Yeah, okay. And what is jealousy? Do you think that jealousy is just the energy, the negative vibes that you're getting from people? Or it's even more than that? Well, it can affect your career. Some okay. things. Yeah. All right, good. That makes sense, makes sense. So again, in some cultures, people don't like to share. They want to keep everything for them because they feel like, you know, a lot of evil eyes and also negative energies will kind of cover all of your thoughts and dreams and stuff, and then you're not going to achieve it. Okay, guys, cool. I will give you a break for five, five to seven minutes, roughly. Get your drinks. I still have my coffee over here. I haven't even tried it. <laughs> So get your drinks, go to the toilet, get a snack, whatever you want to, and then come back and we're going to continue with some activities, okay? All right, see you in a second. You can switch off your cameras. Yep, thank you. I am waiting for you to come back. By the way, the glasses that I wear are actually just for computers. So when I sit in, on my computer, I put them on. Because I spend a lot of time in front of the computer. So I'm having headaches. I free. Yeah. Mm. I, you can actually become very tired. So anyways, when you have having a lot of screen time, it can cause yeah. the eye, eye, eye strain. That's true, yeah. I've been having them for quite some time, but I didn't wear them. But lately I felt like maybe I should, because I no, just spend a lot of time. You feel easy. Yes. Yeah. It, it still rate. needs time for me though to, you know, to adjust my eye that I'm actually wearing something, but let's see. I just started. So I'll let you know in a month how I feel. <laughs> All right, cool. Everyone is back. Now, before I ask, uh, before we actually had a break, I asked you, should we share our goals? Now, we're going to watch a video short video for about two, three minutes. <laughs> and then you're going to see if you actually 
should share your goals or you shouldn't okay let's see what is this man has to say to us well the topic says its name keep your goals to yourself but let's see why let's watch it Everyone, please think of your biggest personal goal. Okay, for real. You take a second. You got to feel this to learn it. Take a few seconds and think of your personal biggest goal. Okay? Imagine deciding right now that you're going to do it. Imagine telling someone that you meet today what you're going to do. Imagine their congratulations and their high image of you. Doesn't it feel good to say it out loud? Don't you uh, feel one step closer already, like it's already becoming part of your identity? Uh, well, Bad news, you should have kept your mouth shut, because that good feeling now will make you less likely to do it. The repeated psychology tests have proven that telling someone your goal makes it less likely to happen. Anytime you have a goal, there are some steps that need to be done, some work that needs to be done in order to achieve it. Ideally, you would not be satisfied until you'd actually done the work. But when you tell someone your goal and they acknowledge it, Psychologists have found that it's called a social reality. The mind is kind of tricked into feeling that it's already done. And then, because you've felt that satisfaction, you're less motivated to do the actual hard work <laughs> necessary. So this goes against the conventional wisdom that we should tell our friends our goals, right? So they hold, it to it, hold us to it. Yeah. So um, let's look at the proof. 1926, Kurt Lewin, founder of social psychology, called this substitution. 1933, Vera Mahler found when it was acknowledged by others, it felt real in the mind. 1982, Peter Gawlitzer wrote a whole book about this, and in 2009, he did some uh, new tests that were published. It goes like this. 163 people across four separate tests. Everyone wrote down their personal goal. Then half of them announced their commitment to this goal to the room, and half didn't. And then everyone was given 45 minutes of work that would directly lead them towards their goal, but they were told that they could stop at any time. Now, those who kept their mouth shut worked the entire 45 minutes on average, and when asked afterwards, said that they felt that they had a long way to go still to achieve their goal. But those who had announced it quit after only 33 minutes on average, and when asked afterwards, said that they felt much closer to achieving their goal. So, if this is true, what can we do? Well, you could resist the temptation to announce your goal. You can delay the gratification that the social acknowledgement brings. And you can understand that your mind mistakes the talking for the doing. But if you do need to talk about something, you can state it in a way that gives you no satisfaction. <laughs> Such as, I really want to run this marathon, so I need to train five times a week and kick my ass if I don't, okay? So audience, next time you're tempted to tell someone your goal, what will you say? Exactly. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think about this now? Do you think it makes sense? Kind of. Uh, kind of? Why do you think Ezra kind of? Because June is certain. He already said in advance that he wouldn't share his goals, so he's 100% sure, right? Yeah. Good, but you say kinda, so you're kind of yes, kind of no. Can you please tell us why? I mean, it, it's it's a feeling. Uh, I mean, so, after watching this video, because they said that when people know, let's say a, a simple thing, right? You want to you want to imagine you are fat right or obese we're not going to use fat we're going to use obese so you're obese and you want to lose weight right and you're so super excited you're motivated you bought healthy food protein shakes whatever whatever it takes right new outfits you will exercise because you want to look good right you, you want to feel nice and then you have this friend she said oh that's good for you i'm so happy for you but are you sure you can do it because we have people like that, right? They say, oh, yeah, well done for you. Like, you're going to do this, but are you sure? Like, you should start small steps or something, you know? So 
that actually automatically cuts you off and you're thinking, yeah, that actually is true. Like, will I be able to do it? Yeah, probably not. And you go to the fridge, eat the whole fridge. Because <laughs> it happens. Like, like, I'm always on a diet. So I know when I say, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go to the gym. I haven't been to the gym. I, I did actually. A couple of years ago when I moved in London for a month, I actually gained weight from going to the gym. And I said, this is not for me. Like, I quit. Since then, I want to do something I tried running, I tried yoga, I tried everything. It's, just, it's not working for me because I don't like it. I hate it. So when I said to a friend of mine, I'm going to go to the gym, exercise every day for an hour, she said, oh, yeah, that's good for you. Like you're doing good things for the body. But are you sure you can do that? Because, you know, you already tried it and you kind of quit. Makes sense for me. So what do you think now about that? Do you think that... Uh, uh, the question is first for Ezra. Do you think that maybe you should keep your mouth shut and never share your future goals or something that you want to do in the future, like pass an exam? Not necessarily my example was with diets, but, you know, pass an exam or get a C1 Cambridge exam certification or whatever. Do you think that you should share it now? Because, you know, people can say, oh, yeah, well done, but are you sure? Like, I don't think you're that good. Uh, I'd rather stay shut because I can, I, I will have more motivation to do. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. This is what in the video was also presented that if you don't share your goals with other people or things you want to achieve, most likely you will achieve because, you know, they're not going to cut you off. They're not going to kind of mislead your, you know. A lot of things could happen, basically. Okay, that was nice. That was good to know. Um, Serena, what do you think about this? Are you going to share your goals with other people? Um, I will share. You will still share? Yeah. Why? Does that give you motivation? Yeah, because uh, tell others people, although some people will say negative things that uh, will told you to uh, like oppose you but but if you share it to succeed the your goal if you want to yeah uh, okay uh, so yeah I understand what you're meaning sometimes people get motivation from other people you know you actually need someone to give you proper support to say yes go on you can do this serena you can do it go for it so it kind of give you positive vibes so you can keep going on it for other people and i think i'm in the other category as well like i want to hear someone to support me but then at the same time i don't want them to know so i'm kind of in between i can't find myself <laughs> so that's a bit challenging but yeah it, it's different for uh every person good uh, Vanessa, how about you? Are you going to share your goals with other people? No, but I have a different reason. Ah, why? Tell us. Mm, because I think not everyone will find their, uh, their really goals and maybe they will follow us only. They will not have their own goals. Okay. Okay interesting to know how about you yuling will you share your goal no why not people might cut me down when i'm achieving my goals mm -hmm. okay good evelyn what do you think Evelyn, are you here? We can't even see you. Your camera is off. I don't know if she's here. Okay. All right. That's fine, guys. That is perfect. Okay, good. Now we're going to do a task. It's kind of a, it's not too long, but it's not very short as well. 
it is also connected with dreams and plans and dreams and we're going to have to read the text and so on. I will share it with you in a second. Let me send you the link. It's kind of an exercise part. So that is the task we're going to do now. So it is called plans and dreams. In the first part of the exercise, you need to use going to. So when we use going to, we usually refer for something that is going to happen in the future, like future simple. So for example, the first one, he, you have the verb uh, in a bracket on the side and you have the noun. Okay, so for example, this one, going to. He is going to miss the flight. That will be your first answer. I'm just giving you an example. So he is going to miss the flight. We don't have to write it down, okay? So bear in mind when you have a negative form, how are you gonna use it? Again, you have to use going to. So this one is with going to, not with will, even though both uh, versions are completely fine because it's something for the future. But in this particular task, you have going to. When we scroll down, we need to complete the tag with vocabulary of airports. So it could be a bit misleading and also a couple of options could be possible. So let's see the first one. Last summer, I flew to New York City with my husband to visit some friends. The flight left from, what are we gonna choose here? We'll say San Francisco. You can choose that and then you're going to keep going if you have a potential letter like this one d then you're going to have to think about words that start with that particular letter so in a way you have to get the meaning of it okay that is exercise b now the next one is a bit long it's about the world's biggest airport so once we read the text which is about beijing china then you're going to have to choose the correct answer. Is it true or false? And the last part of the exercise is listening. So you have to listen five conversations at the airport. And then you need to match the speakers with the places in the box. So is it like arrivals? Dialect one, is it arrivals? You're going to write, for example, arrivals. We don't know what is it. And then at the end, you just need to answer the questions. I think roughly it will take you like 10 minutes probably, but take your time, okay? Don't be in a rush because I will receive your answers. So I just want to see how are your listening skills because we did work quite a bit today, right? We watched some videos. Understanding is good, but we just need to see what kind of answer potentially we can give, okay? Any questions? No? Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, good luck. I just sent it. I forgot to say. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah, I'm just checking the scores because I can see there are a lot of uh, marked red. So I'm just trying to reread it. Just to see where are the mistakes, if there are any mistakes. Well, because I guess it doesn't think the word. Especially in size B. <laughs> so just... Yeah, yeah. I know it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see some of the mistakes. Yeah, that's fine. Some of them are oh. actually correct, but just the system didn't recognize them for some reason. Yeah, it's, that's it's fine. especially in B, I do have more than two corrects, to be honest, because I just type in the word because I just link the question. Yeah. Because that's why. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, sometimes when you need to... Uh, oh, I, the I was surprised for first. Wow, that's low. 3.7 yeah, out of 10. Yeah, sometimes when you need to put in the word, for example, if there is the first letter, most likely you need to rewrite the first letter instead of, let's say, uh, departure. So you have departure, basically, without D. Sometimes the system actually prefers for you to write the full word. So sometimes that's a tricky part as well, but that's fine. That's why I wanted to see the, the results. Sometimes it does that, don't know why. Yeah, 
that's my overall score after your inspection and checking. You see, even in exercise D, where you have you have them all correct, like yes. in order how they should be, yes. but but check out how you spelled arrival. Yeah, arrival without the S, I guess. Wait. But you have double A. Oh, sorry. Yes. Instead yeah. of double R, yeah. So, <laughs> so that, that's why. Yeah. Okay. It's my typing mistake because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, well, it's okay. But I do get a lot of correct, especially I do listen carefully to get what they what the answer. Mm. The question was, but I submit the answer and did this few mistakes. I don't know why. Yeah. The second task, task B, was a bit challenging because you need to find the suitable words and obviously you need to correct, you need to basically choose the words that the person who makes the test thinks about it. So it's kind of tricky as well, but that's okay. That's okay. Well, I don't know why in exercise B sounds correct, even though I didn't uh, type in the full words, it's still getting correct. Mm. Yeah, don't worry about it. That's fine. I'm just going to reread them. All of uh, each one's who's going to send it to me, obviously. And just, cause I just want to see what is your opinion there? How do you think about which word to put and stuff like that? Because I don't want to judge in advance, but I actually think you are quite a strong group, like all of you, you're quite good. And the good thing is that, because obviously we have two months in advance before we start the official course and you get to you learn me, I get to learn you, you know, we're just going to have to adjust ourselves. So I can see that I feel like you are quite a strong group and we're going to have a great great progress with you as a whole group so i'm actually happy about that i'm the only boy in here <laughs> that's fine don't worry sometimes uh, <laughs> students even come later because you know officially the course hasn't been started yet because it's going to start in september so this is just like extra boost for you so don't worry most likely worry. it will be boys as well so if the official course comes how many students in this group in this, in this group uh, so it depends uh, let's say in one of the groups i have 17 students which is the maximum they should be 16 but one of the students wanted to transfer there so he's the 17th one from he was in uh KET, but he decided that he wants to be in pet so he felt like it was the material was a bit too easy for him so he wanted to go to the other group but yeah Roughly, to be fair, ideally, I think the ideal number is around 10 to work with students. So you get to ask every student individually. If there are more, it's a bit more intense. So more than uh, six, seven, uh, seven, seven students. No, I would say, so yes, now you are seven, but it doesn't mean that you're going to stay seven. Most likely, the number of the students will increase. From other country? <laughs> Their country, maybe even just from your country, it depends. Yeah, it's good when you have different students from different countries, and it's it's kind of good. Is anyone else finishing or almost about to finish? Oh, what's my final score? <laughs> oh, Siri, I don't know. I'm going to have to redo them, all of them, but it takes time. So I'm not going to do it now, but I can see that most of your answers are good. So you won't be with 3.7. <laughs> I, was, I was surprised. Wow. But you know what, if you go back to your first exercise, you can see that, let's say in sentence seven, you forgot going to. Exercise A. 
Number seven. Number no, exercise A, the first one, number seven. I am not staying in a hotel, but you needed to put going to, so you forgot going to. Oh, right. I'm not going to stay in a hotel. Yeah. So that's why, yeah. Because, you know, the answer on its own, it's fine, but it's not what we were looking for. So that's a bit, you know, if you were too fast. <laughs> yes. If you were too fast, then it's a problem. That's fine. That's no problem, really. I mean, it's no problem for now, but generally when you do like a test or something, it's a little bit slower, you know, unless you're limited with time. Obviously, if you are limited with time, then the first thing you should do is something that you are 100% sure that this is the correct answer. But then again, recheck it, do it again. So. Uh, June, until the other ones are uh, doing the, okay, Cindy is also ready, good. June, how long have you been studying English? Since I was, uh, since I was four, I guess, yeah. Okay, and how do you find it? How do I find it? Yeah. My mother has been teaching me since I was four. And now he's not teaching me, so I have to study by myself and other teachers as well. Okay. Which part of um, the skills do you think it's the hardest for you or the most challenging? Like Red. speaking, writing, reading? But for now it's speaking because I'm because we're not, not speaking English that much nowadays. Because okay. The other course, I don't think I can speak English right now. A better and more fluent English right now. Yeah. Okay, tell me, tell me this, answer me this question. What do you think it's a good communication when two people speak, not necessarily in English, in any language? What oh. makes a good communication? Try your best to understand the meaning of and what they say. Yeah, if you cannot understand, then you probably don't know what they are speaking about. Okay, do you think giving short answers is better and more accurate um, rather than giving long answers, a bit more brief answers? Which one do you think are better, short answers or long answers? If you are shy, you will probably answer the short answers. If you are co more confident, then you will answer the long questions. And which one would be more accurate or correct ones, the short one or the long ones? Uh, the long ones. If you go straight to the point, obviously, if there is like a yes or no question, like very short something, just, you know, just to, to give the, the answer and not to play a smart guy, <laughs> then obviously the short ones would be fine, right? But in order to have a good communication with someone, you need to justify your answers. And this is something that we like to work with Cambridge exams, especially. Also, maybe in the future, you're going to have IELTS exams, right? IELTS exams are also, if you want to uh, move to another country, study in another country, most likely you will have to do that exam as well. So the good thing is that you get to practice now, right? But uh, the most important, basically, the most important thing is that you need to always justify your answers. When you speak, even like when you have a normal conversation with your friend and he asks you, for example, um, do you play, I don't know, need for speed, right? That's the first thing that crossed my mind. And if you say, yeah, I do, or no, I mean, you already answered the question, right? But it's not enough. So you kind of have to elaborate because he's gonna ask you, oh really, I hate it. So instead of you, uh, waiting for a follow-up question, you can answer it. You can say, yeah, I play Need of Speed. Um, it's not really fun for me, you know, but it's better doing something rather than nothing. So that is something that we like to encourage all our students to do, justify their answer. That's very important. Who 
cares if the other person, again, doesn't agree or disagrees with you? It's really more important than that. Really? It's just your way of seeing, but justifying the answer. I study English. Why? Because I enjoy or I feel myself more valuable when I speak in English. I'm just bluffing, you know, I'm just giving uh, examples. So that's very important for, for you to get it as a practice. That's why I just keep asking questions. But why this? But why that? What? For? Give me something positive. Obviously, now I'm training you how to prepare your answers for the future. So that is also a very good thing to kind of think about it. Like when you do something, a good communicator will make you, if you actually justify your answers, give a bit more. Short answers are fine. Unless it's just like a speedy quiz, speedy quiz. You need to be very fast and accurate. That's fine. That's completely different. But in order to improve speaking skills, you need to justify your answers. And there, there's no difference than that. Okay, I'm just going to check who... If sent your it. sentences is not fluent and not... And That's okay. You are, and you are Sometimes. not during conversation. So like I said before... Okay, but sometimes people feel more confident to express, it, uh, to express their opinions and not necessarily they're giving you the whole information that you basically need. In other words, they're actually buying time, so they want to speak, right? But in their head, they're actually processing different kind of information. So until they pick up, you know, sometimes students say, well, teacher, how can I think in English? Like, I want to think in English. That's not easy because for you to, to start thinking in English, basically you need to live in England or America, whatever you're going to choose. And also you have to have a lot of contacts with people. But generally when we say we want to think in English means that you need to have a wider uh, list of vocabulary. So you need your vocabulary must be excessive, right? You need to know synonyms and antonyms and all those things in order for you to express yourself much much better so you would sound like a native speaker right but as you said if somebody says speaks for two minutes and says nothing <laughs> i think that's okay because he's not giving me short answers so that means that he's not just thinking about the specific answer to give it to me to that question but he's kind of trying to buy some time at the same time you know because oftentimes, if you're not sure with the answer, and this is a psychological trick, you can use it with any subject, not necessarily just English, and just in general in life, buy some time. If a person asks you, for example, so what do you think about the, mm, I don't know, the flowers in Australia? I mean, have you ever thought about it? I haven't. I just saw a flower here, so that's why I'm improvising. So... Instead of you saying flowers, are you kidding me? Like, why would I think about flowers? Don't do that, okay? I mean, if that is part of your character, like this is how you think and this is how you react to things, that's fine. But instead of that, you can go flowers in Australia. Hmm, interesting, I actually never thought about it. Oh, you know, flowers are good, they're blooming. Sometimes they smell, sometimes they look good. Sometimes they don't. You, you see, I didn't say anything. Then again, I'm buying some time until my brain starts getting the information that I need to give to the other person. Or if you have an exam and they ask you, so how many sheep are in China, for example? Because in geography, I don't know about you, but we in Europe used to study, for example, the approximate amount of sheep in specific country, like how many sheep they produce. I know it's irrelevant. Who cares about how many sheep have been born in that country? But this is what we used to study. So it was a kind of too many informations, too many numbers for no reason. So instead of me saying, are you kidding me? Why on earth would I know how many sheep were in Europe? You can say, well, because, you know, it's meat and people eat meat. And every day, you know, the shops are full with fresh meat and stuff. I would say quite a lot. I didn't say the number because I have no idea. It could be millions, could be billions. I don't know. So tricks like this can actually help you to make you feel more confident. Also buy you some time and also improve your speaking abilities. Because a good communicator, a good speaking skill is when you speak 
and how do you speak if you use 10 words and you just keep using them you're not fluent unfortunately right you're not improving your speaking skills because your vocabulary is very limited you're just using 10 words or 50 doesn't matter right but when you're doing this kind of uh, psychological uh, tricks we say them you can say you know I don't know well you know because people like uh, also try not to imitate me try not to use you know I'm just saying this in a more natural way because when people speak with normal people they kind of use this kind of expression oh I don't know you know like this like that that is very informal right you can use this with friends but if you go for a job interview you need to have a test don't do this. Don't use, I don't know, you know, like this. Don't use that, okay? It doesn't sound good and it's not professional. And also you want to uh, improve your speaking skills. So that's not going to help you. We're going to talk about that during the whole year. So I'm going to stop now. Just going to check. I think almost everyone sent me. Okay, right. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got one. Who didn't send it to me? Um, thinking. Serena, did you? Oh, Serena, is Serena here? She left. Oh, she's here. Sweetie, did you finish it? Oh, I haven't finished it. You haven't finished it yet. Okay, but weren't you supposed to go to another class? Serena? Yeah. Did you have a class at 7 30? Um yes yeah and you didn't go why not um haven't done the sweetie but don't worry about that if you need to go to your class go from next week we're basically going to start half an hour earlier so you will have time to go to that class as well okay yeah you can go if you want to that's fine don't worry about it okay all right sweetie thank you good so guys, I just wanted to see the scores so far. Do you know who has the best score from the system? I need to recheck them again. Vanessa, Vanessa has the best score so far. Well done, Vanessa. I figured. <laughs> I figured. Why? Why do you well, figure this? Well, we are the same age. Well, I know her. I know her, she's smart. I just... Oh, Vanessa, look at the compliments. <laughs> Lovely. Perfect. I'm going to recheck them and I will let you know next class, basically, because obviously I need to read all of them. But that's good. Don't encourage yourself with the points, okay? That's not the catch. Okay, we have about 10 minutes to finish this class. Let's do some other activity now. Um, just need to find this one. Okay. All right. Let's go with this one. I choose this one. Uh, where is my... Think about inventions. I said at the beginning of the class, inventions that you believe that are very good, very useful. For example, I bless the person who invented laptops. Not computers, laptops. Bless him. He did a well, well job. Why? Because I take it anywhere I want to go. If I want to stay in England, if I want to go to Macedonia, if I want to go to Spain, take my laptop, get my uh, camera, get my mouse. I always use mouse because it's much easy, right? So there's no other invention I can think of. If you ask my mom, she would say um, dishwashing machine. She loves that. She doesn't want to wash dishes. And she said, whoever invented this, it is amazing. So think about it for a second. We're going to choose two students. One student is going to tell the invention and it's going to justify why is it good. The other one is going to find reasons why it is not the best invention and is not really convenient. I give you one minute just to think about a couple of inventions, something you think it's useful, good, and so on. Okay, I'll choose, uh, I'll start with, let me 
go like this. I'm gonna write you your names here so I wouldn't forget. Okay, I'll start with Ezra. Ezra is student A and 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 you link. So Ezra, you need to tell us what invention do you believe is the best one that has been invented? You link needs to disagree with you. Um art canvases. Without it I I wouldn't be painting. I I without it I can't be painting right now because okay. when whenever I paint on paper it always you know, you know soaks. Okay. Is that the right word? Soaks. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You link, what do you think now? She says canvas. Give her a reason why canvas is not good, but maybe a cardboard or the wall or I don't know, maybe some materials, other materials, a much better option. Yuli, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah? Yeah? So what do you think, sweetie? How can you disagree with her? Convince her that she's wrong. The canvas is big and it's hard to bring it to anywhere. Okay. So she says it's big. What do you think, Ezra? Do you think it's big and heavy? Mm, depends on the size. Well. All right, good. Another reason you link? So you say it's big, it's kind of not convenient for people to kind of take it and go somewhere with it. Another reason? I can't think of it. Okay, and what is your invention? What did you think about it? The internet. The internet. Okay, why do you think the internet is the best invention? Ezra needs to disagree with you now. Because such a lot of information that we need. In one place. Okay. Ezra, what do you think about that? Mm, I think it's bad because sometimes um, it can have a bad effect on people and some people and uh, and some people might even take advantage of the internet and do something terrible okay you link what do you think about that could you disagree with that or agree Well, I'll agree with that. <laughs> okay, uh, June and Vanessa. June is student A first, Vanessa is B. June, what is your invention? Vanessa is sweating already. <laughs> yes, I will give her uh, a tough one. <laughs> I would say like USB drive is the best thing to be invented because many people store a lot of information, bring it anywhere. So that you can use it anytime you want, plug into your laptop and yeah, you can use it. Okay. All right. So USB, Vanessa, what do you think? I think it is in a small size and it is easily to lose. To lose it, perfect. Mm. Then maybe I think it has a limited memory, so yeah. we cannot use it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Excellent, good. That's all. That's all, good. June, what do you think about that? Is she, is she right or not? Mm, on the cons, but there's a lot of pros. It's like, well, 
it may be small and easily to be lost, but it's actually very convenient despite the, the memory you can store. Now, but on the latest list, we can store like one TB. That's actually very big. Okay, All right, that's good. Vanessa, what is your invention that you think is the best thing ever happened? I say is online shopping. Online shopping, okay, why? Yeah, because it makes our life become more convenient and especially during this pandem pandemic then we can um, buy the things in home so we no need to go to the shopping center to buy it. Exactly. Perfect, good. June, disagree with her. What? You want me to disagree? <laughs> yeah, she says online shopping. Now you have to say, nope, you're wrong. All right. I would say there's a lot of scammers. Or online shopping will easily get scammed. And you know, those kind of offers that the scammer would use that to trick the customers. Yeah. Well, lose their money and they cannot refund their money. So that's one of the major problems in online shopping. Because you, nev you never know that we're actually buying something that will get tricked. Okay. Good, perfect, perfect, well done. Okay, we got the last group. Um, just Evelyn, is Evelyn here? Evelyn is not here, okay. Cindy, tell me what is your invention that you think is the best thing ever happened? Um. Yeah, Sorry, Tweety, I didn't get that. Earphone. Earphones, okay. Why? Um, because we can share it and we can. We can hear something uh, alone. We can just mm -hmm. hear inside the earpiece. If we want, uh, if it's in the uh, noisy place, we can hear it inside clearly. Okay, good. So I will disagree with you. I will tell you that if you keep using them quite often, you're going to have uh, damaged eardrums. So potentially within the, like the older you become, your basically the sound, you will be very sensitive to sound and you're going to have pain in your ears. And if you just keep doing that every single day, it's just going to be too much. Do you think, am I right or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you, but you must must manage our time not using too much not using it too much exactly maybe for i don't know maybe an hour or so maybe i don't know okay guys cool cool uh before we finish do you have any particular topic that you want us to do maybe in the following classes <laughs> Any, any particular topic that we can work on? How about we continue our astrologies? Astrology. Okay, also you like topics like this. Do you enjoy them? Uh, yeah? It's very exciting. Okay. You see, Vanessa is super happy about it. Okay, all right. So I'm going to try to kind of continue this class maybe in the next one as well with something like this interesting. Okay, good, good to know. If you have any ideas, you need to let me know. You can, you can email the company and they will tell me, okay? So you have their emails. You have a WhatsApp group, right? Yeah, they need to add me. So I will speak with them. They will add me and then you can tell me if you have any ideas, all right? Good, good. Well done today. Perfect. Awesome. That was the class for today, guys. You did an amazing job. Interesting, something different than what you're used to speak before. Next week, we're going to continue with something. Not All right. Thank you for today. Have a good evening, guys. See you next week. Bye. Okay, goodbye.
Goodbye. Bye-bye.